In this episode of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, we visit once again with our frequent guest, offensive coordinator Brian Callahan. And as usual, he delivered. Brian Callahan talking about this football team, their accomplishments, what they did against the Kansas City Chiefs, what they're looking to do in the Super Bowl against the Los Angeles Rams. This offense is playing at a very high level. And the quarterback, Joe Burrow, is playing at as high a level as you can play. And Brian Callahan has a big hand in all of it. We're going to find out what his contribution has been to this football team and its successes on its way to Super Bowl 56. You're in the trenches once again with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. Also in the trenches with us, offensive coordinator and special guest today, Brian Callahan. Coach, congratulations. Super Bowl 56. How about that? I mean, your celebration after that football game was priceless. <laughs> it went viral and deservedly so. I mean, boy, that was an that was a well-earned happiness, coach. <laughs> uh, it was as about as happy as you can be in this profession, you know. You you work really hard to, to have an opportunity to play in the Super Bowl, and, and a lot of things got to go right. Um, a lot of a lot of people got to play well. You got to coach well, and, and you got to get a couple bounces. And uh, to get to this spot, it's a really difficult thing to do. And that, that was just uh, pure elation at that point. Uh, get a chance to go back to the Super Bowl. Um, I, I uh, remember seeing the coaches before the game, uh, and you guys were right next to our radio booth, and you all just kind of everybody put a hand in, and it was the a big, you know, a sign of unity and ready to play and everything. And that was great to see. And then after the game, the explosion of emotion and, and, and the pure unadulterated joy, you know, that was in that in that uh, room next to us was unbelievable to watch. It, it was a lot of fun. You guys had to be just going crazy. Yeah, we were. We went pretty crazy. It was uh, when you get to those spots, you, you spend so much time together, you know, uh, the, the weeks and uh, weeks and weeks and weeks and hours of hours of the day. And, you know, it becomes a little bit like you, it becomes like part of your family because you just you spend so much time together. Right. Um, and so to, to be able to to enjoy that moment uh, together with all the guys that, that you're working with every week and for hours a day and everyone's doing their part. Uh, it's a it's a fun moment to be uh, to be able to share together, knowing that we all had a part. We all did this work to get to this point. Uh, it's cool. It's it's. There's not many many feelings like it. I think out there in the world, and uh, we certainly enjoyed it. So your dad, Bill Callahan, is a unbelievable football coach in my eyes, as good as there is, and a special human being as well. Just there's not a better guy walking this planet than your dad. I mean, he's he's an unbelievable person. What was it like when you guys first talked about you know the big success after that AFC Championship game? What was his feeling? Uh, just proud, excited, you know, um, knows how hard it is. You know, he, it's, he's only been to one Super Bowl, And so he just, he understands what, what goes into that type of season. Uh, and so he just was really happy. And, and he's got relationships with, with a lot of guys on our staff that he knows well, um, and just, just happy to, for our success and happy to see guys, um, be able to, to get a chance at these moments. And, you know, I think he deep down wishes he, he was doing it, not me, you know, sometimes I think, cause we're all. We're all competitors. Sure. Um, but he, he was he was very proud and very happy and, and just said, you know, enjoy these enjoy these things because they are they're hard to get to. And um, it takes a lot of a lot of things to go your way to get to them. And uh, don't take it for granted. I, I know your mom loves your dad, but I bet your mom was rooting for you to be in the Super Bowl and not your dad <laughs> being the being your mom. But that, that, that has to be. T tell us about your mom. What kind of uh, what kind of personality does your mom have? How does she handle all this type of stuff she does a great job handling all of it you know it's it she's she's done this for a long time she's been a head coach's wife she's helped you know she's been on coaching staffs for a long time and right. she understands the whole thing up from top to bottom uh she's a, a veteran a grizzled pro if you will um <laughs> but she does a great job she she understands you know she's always cheering for my dad and hoping for the best because she's been involved with his career obviously for as long as he's been doing it and and she's been a part of the uh, elation and joy and all the heartbreak and firings and movings and all the things that go along with it and raising four kids on top of it. Uh, you know, she's, she's a, she's a saint. If, if you ask me, she handles it as good as anybody. She's got a great way of, of staying. She's like the most neutral person I've ever been around. Um, 
she she keeps her her personal feelings out of it most of the time uh but she does a great job she's she's been a huge part of my you know success support stat support uh system um and you know she's very very she's she's the she's the one behind the scenes that makes it all go one of the interesting relationships i think in the super bowl um is you know all the coaches know each other you know zach obviously was was on mcveigh's staff but you you ended up you coach stafford at, with the detroit lions so you you have hands-on knowledge of what he likes what he doesn't like what he his strengths his weaknesses all that all that kind of thing um what, what is what's stafford like as a player and as a person um phenomenal on both parts um he he's you know, I, I felt like in my time in Detroit, you know, he, he, people were aware of his talent, you know, but I, I, after being with him for two years, I, re, I, I realized that there's so much about him that makes him unique and special in this league as a player. Um, he's a great worker. He's got an unbelievable intelligence. Um, I was just so impressed by him for the two years I got to work with him and his physical talents off the charts. You know, he can, he can throw the ball. Uh, he can throw the ball as far as anybody can throw it. He can place it in great spots. Um, and he's got a great knowledge of the game and great understanding of how defenses are playing them. Um, I, I just came away from my experiences with him incredibly impressed. And I always felt like he never got anywhere near the amount of credit that he deserved uh, for how good he was in Detroit. Um, I, I don't know that he had teams around him that were always uh, at the caliber of the one he's with, with the Rams. And you can see you put him in a team like that. Uh, he's got him in the Super Bowl in his first year there. So, I think he's an incredible talent. He's an he's a ultimate warrior. He's one of the toughest guys I've ever been around. The things that he played through in Detroit, um, the toughness that he showed uh, was was some of the, I mean, one of the toughest people I've ever seen play football. And uh, he's a warrior. And he and he's he puts the team on his back. He put that city on his back in Detroit. Uh, he did everything he could to deliver uh, for them week in and week out. And his teammates mean a lot to him. He's a phenomenal teammate. Uh, he's, he does a great job relating to the guys in the locker room. Um, he was the unquestioned leader of that team for all the, for the two years I was there, and I know he was uh, obviously before that and since. And so, uh, you put him in a team like the Rams, who's got a bunch of great dudes around him too. He's there's no doubt that he's going to have the success he's had this year. Um, and then as a human, as a person, he, he's phenomenal. The work that he did in Detroit uh, with the Boys and Girls Club there, the work that he did, uh, him and his wife Kelly uh, put in so much time into that city and did so many unbelievable charitable acts. Uh, for the kids and the people of city of Detroit, mm. uh, he's, he's phenomenal. There's, there's, I can't say enough good words about him. Um, you know, a part of me wishes that we didn't have to play against him right. uh, because he is so good. Um, and he's, he's, he's everything that, that you want and, and your quarterback. And um, I love working with him and uh, I'm sure that they love him there in, in, in LA as well. He's, he's shown everything that I've always thought of him and uh, he's in a Super Bowl. Yeah. It's, it's quite a situation in that, um, Obviously, he made the impression that he made on you to the organization when he said to Detroit, I'd like to be traded. You know, I'd like to I've, I've spent my whole career here. I'd like to try to move on somewhere else where it might be a chance to be in the playoffs uh, in, in a more regular basis. And, and for them to grant that speaks volumes about what they think about him, you know, as, as a player and a person. And then McVeigh's like, you know, we want to go from good to great at the quarterback position. We think we're good. We could be great with this guy. And. And the, the whole thing kind of, kind of, kind of came together there. But it's there's not a whole lot of organizations have a relationship with a player like Detroit had with him to do that for him. Is that don't you think? Yeah, and I think that they, they you know, he he's he's earned their respect. He he gave that that team, that organization, that city, uh, everything he possibly could give. I, right. I know it for a fact. I watched it. I've seen it. Um, he he did everything he could, and I think he got to the point in his career where. You look up and you go, I'm, I'm probably on the back end of it. I don't know how many more years I got left. And the, the prospect of, of a guy in his 13th year at the quarterback position of going through another rebuild, another another reset, a start over, you know, you could see why he would. I don't I think that was a really hard thing for him to do uh, because he loved it. He loved that place so much. Right. Um, <clears throat> but I think that he knew that if he wanted a chance to finish his career the way that he knew he was capable, uh, he needed to do something different. He, he didn't need to be involved uh, with another restart there. So. Uh, I thought it was really classy by the organization. It worked out for both parties. You know, they got thing. They, it was a mutually beneficial uh, thing. But I'm glad they did it, and I'm, I'm happy that he's had the chance to have the success he's had this year. Reminds me a little bit of uh, Boomer Sison's situation with the Bengals. Um, 
at the tail end of his career with the Bengals, there was another rebuild process going on. He went to Mike Brown and said, you know, I'd really like to go home. I'd like to go play for the New York Jets. Mike Brown says, okay, can work out a deal. And he traded him to the Jets. I mean, that again, like you said, the respect that Mike Brown had for Boomer Sison had done for the organization and for the Brown family, it, uh, you know, it, it trumped everything. So it, it does happen in the league. There's uh, there's no two ways about it. Um, you know, I, I, in a little bit of kind of uh, research, it's, it's all right, there's connections. How about this connection, Coach? The color analyst of the Rams, MJD. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And you yeah. guys played – you guys – he was your running back in high school. You guys had an unbelievable high school football team. Yep. He, he was your running back, and then you go to UCLA together. He's the color analyst of the uh, Los Angeles Rams radio broadcast. How about that connection right there? <laughs> yeah, and I still talk to him pretty regularly. He's uh, he's he's a great friend of mine and, and obviously a teammate for, for the better part of almost a decade. Um, and he's he's awesome. And – he got involved with some of the TV stuff, NFL Network, and he started doing radio for the Rams. And right. uh, he, he's the best. I love Maurice. And we actually have this really this enormous um, WhatsApp group text with all the guys on our team. Uh, there's probably, I don't know, there's probably 60 guys on this text. <laughs> and uh, I, I jumped on it yesterday, and then Maurice is up there. It's saying, go Rams and all this stuff. And as we go back and forth, and uh, – but yeah, he's. I, I'm so happy for his success, and and he's one of my favorite players I've ever been around, and uh, he's found a nice little you know, niche for himself uh, post playing career. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, the Cincinnati Bengals coach and the, and the tremendous season. I mean, just an unbelievable run. Um, the football team's eight and three, in the last eleven games. Uh, getting hot at the right time is a big factor. Playing your best football at the most opportune time is a huge factor. In, in a success like this, having a great run at the end of the season. What do you think has been the key to it from an offensive standpoint? Um, our guys continue to make plays in big moments. You know, when we, when we got to have it, they make a play. Uh, when we need when we need an explosive game, we find one. When we need a touchdown, we get it. Uh, when we need to get in the field goal range, we find a way to get the yards to get in the field goal range. Uh, our guys have just consistently made plays when we've needed them most. And We've had games where we've played fine offensively. We've played games where we've played great. We've had games where we haven't played well. And in all of those games, our guys have never really wavered in their belief that they could make the play to win the game. And in a, in a lot more games than not, uh, we've we've done that. And uh, we got guys that, that, that keep a standard at practice, uh, that do a great job of understanding when, uh, when and where and how to put the work in and, and what that means and, and how to get to it a championship level every week that you step out there uh, on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, all the way into Sunday when you go play. Um, and they, they don't, adversity doesn't bother them. Uh, negativity doesn't ever get to them. They just go out and play ball and we could be down 21 to three in the AFC championship at Kansas city. And, and our guys go, Oh yeah, no, we can, we'll, we'll be all right. We'll come back. And uh, it's, it's pretty special to be around. And you, know, you mentioned uh, practice habits, you know, practicing so well, how's the practices gone so far this week in the initial week of preparation for Super Bowl 56. Uh, fantastic. You know, these guys, they got such great energy at practice right now. And, and that's, that's, they should, you know what I mean? We're, we're one of the last two teams playing and yep. we're playing, we're playing as much football as you can possibly play in a season. And um, I think they're all enjoying the fact they get to be around each other for two more weeks playing football. Uh, there's, we, we've stretched this thing as far as you can go. We've taken this team this year as, as far as you can go uh, as far as weeks of weeks of time together. Um, but, you know, as we were kind of, going back and forth before we started, you know, this part of what what's what's great about gaining these experiences and these playoff games, these big moments and get ready for a Super Bowl is you realize that there is another there is another gear in practice. There is another level you can get to. Um, and that's why you see great teams stay great, because they understand what it takes. They know the type of, of effort you have to put in of, of how, how good a practice has to be, how fast you can practice. Um, and our guys have, have sort of felt that this week. You hear Colton saying, like, wow, this is this is different. And it's like, well, yeah. And you hope. The lesson is that this is what it should be like all the time. Now that you know, you don't know until you know. And, and now our guys know what the what the level is. And so you hope that, that that carries over for future years as well. That boy, we we really know what the what the difference is between a playoff and Super Bowl type practice and, and your traditional Wednesday at week eight, you know, and, and you try to keep the standard at that one. Um, but it's been pretty fun to watch and, and our guys have done a great job. You know, you make, you make a great point, coach. I mean, I, my recall of of uh, practices for Super Bowl 16, it's like 
your feet are barely touching the ground. I mean, you're on cloud nine, you're flying, you know, and it's like the games are, there's preseason tempo, regular season, postseason, and then Super Bowl is like warp speed. It's like, whoa, man, you know, I got to get my mind going to click faster, get my feet going to click faster. But but practices leading up to it were, were un- unbelievable, you know, and they, they go so fast, you know, everything, yeah. everything is just fast, fast, fast. But it, it is you, uh, your, your body and your mind adjust, you know, and, and, and it is being being able to know you can reach to that point and get there. You know, you can get there again. Right. Yep. And I think that's a great lesson for, for our teams. You know, we got a lot of young players playing, you know, a lot of guys in their first, second year uh, to know what the difference is and, and see the, the the standard of what it takes to get there. It's, it's great for them for the future, for the future of our franchise and for their for their careers to understand what it takes and what it what it looks like when you get to this level and and how it should be all the time. And I think our guys have all year have done a great job of, of really putting in the right type of work uh, from the time from OTAs all the way through the season. Uh, we got a very consistent group and they really they put the work in and they practice hard. They practice the right way. Um, that's a big reason why, why we're here. How much of a pleasure is it to work every day with a quarterback that uh, understands the physicality of the game of football? kind of plays football with the mindset of a linebacker, you know, mm-hmm. and almost the approach of a linebacker just, just loves football, loves the, the not just the, the glory aspects of it, you know, ringing up stats and all, but just likes the, like he said, the physicality and the, 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 uh, you know, the, the competitive nature of the whole thing. He loves that, doesn't he? Yeah. And that's what, I think that's what makes the, the, the our team follows his lead. That's how we've been able to find ways uh, to win a bunch of games, a lot of different ways. And, we won some gritty, tough games. We've won some ugly-ish type games, and then we've 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 broken out and thrown for a bunch of yards and, and been, you know, hitting the long ball and all those things. But um, I think that's part of just who he is, and, and they our team responds to that kind of toughness and that kind of mentality uh, because I think that's what our team is from top to bottom. And we got a lot of guys like him uh, on our team, which is another big reason why we've had the success that we've had. Of a lot of like-minded individuals, um, but but Joe is is the is on the forefront of it and. You know, anything goes bad. He never changes. He takes a sack. He pops up and jogs off the field. He throws an interception. He, he's mad at himself or mad at, who, you know, whoever would be at fault. Um, and then he just jogs off the field and gets right to the next one. And, and he never, ever, ever wavers. And I think that our team follows in that manner and, and things never, never get too, we never get too high. We never get too low. And, and guys just go out and do their job. It's, it's pretty fun to be around. Yeah, it, it's, it's really, it's an amazing thing to watch. I mean, beating the Kansas City Chiefs twice in the same month, uh, they went, they went uh, nine and or eleven and two in their last thirteen games. The only two losses they had were in the same month to the Cincinnati Bengals by three <laughs> points each time. How about that? The rest of the league they go eleven and zero, but they can't beat the Cincinnati Bengals at Paul Brown Stadium or at Arrowhead Stadium. Man, what do you remember about those football games, Coach? I'm going to remember being down eleven points at halftime in both of them. Uh, that's, uh, you know what? I, I won't probably ever forget. I'll never forget the the play that our, our defense made at the end of the half. Oh my gosh! Um, that was such an incredible play. They they covered the primary. They rallied for the tackle, and you know Kansas City was they were being aggressive. They were trying to put us away. They're trying to go up twenty eight to three at the half or yep. twenty ten, whatever it was at the time, um, and, and really make it really difficult for us to climb out of that hole. And what a response by our defense to bow up in the red zone tackle the ball short of the goal line and, and the time runs out. I mean, it's as good as any turnover you could have. And, um, and it really set us up once, once that happened, our guys walked into the locker room and said, yeah, no, we were down 11 the last time we got this. We're fine. We'll be able to, you know, and I just did yeah, on the road in the FC championship game. And so it speaks to the character of our team. Um, the tenacity of our defense in that second half was, was incredible. Um, I've not seen Patrick Mahomes play like that much in his career. Uh, really unbelievable job by those guys on the, on the other side of the ball. And then, you know, our guys made enough plays at the right times to, to put us in position to win. And, um, you know, when that kick went through, I, I don't I won't forget how that feel that felt. That was, uh, you know, that, when that moment happens, you actually are going to go to the Super Bowl. It's it's it almost doesn't feel real. It's almost uh, it's almost like you're watching somebody else. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but it's it was it was unbelievable. It was, it was unbelievable moment. I'll never forget it. Yeah, it is crazy. I mean. Uh, in, in the second half of both those games, the Patrick Mahomes-led explosive offense, six total points on 10 possessions. And he it, it, basically, I mean, he really did not really feel comfortable with what he's looking at and didn't yeah. want to turn it over. And it was it was an incredible, uh, incredible thing to watch. I mean, Tyreek Hill, shout out. 
in the second half yards. He didn't have a catch for any yards, and uh, Mahomes threw for 50, I think it was, in the second half. There's some crazy stuff there. So, the, I mean, the defense shut the door, but you guys rally and and, uh, and, and make big plays. Uh, that Samaj P. Ryan screen pass was massive, wasn't it? Uh, Carmen gets a good block. And how about Jamar Chase down the football field, sustaining that block for how long he sustained that block for yeah. Samaj to make that play? Well, it's not. I think at this point now, that's who Jamar. We all know who Jamar is, and that's what he is. You know, he 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 gives he gives great effort uh, with and without the ball, and he's done it multiple times this year. And that was a, a huge moment, and really the reason. You know, we stress to those guys all the time that the explosive runs, explosive plays, they all come from downfield blocks, and they come from guys making making those types of plays uh, down the field because the guys that you know the corners in the secondary, the safeties in the corners are the ones that prevent those explosives, and so. They they got there's they got great buy-in. They know how important it is to, to be great blocking on the perimeter. Um, and they take a lot of pride in it. And Jamar made a hell of a play. And Samaj finished it off with a great run and obviously got started because uh, Jackson did a great job uh, getting out and getting the guy covered up. But uh, huge play at a huge moment, you know, that that uh, put a gig put us at ten points uh, before the half and put us in, in striking position to go down there and, and just get one more touchdown and be right back in the game. Yeah, no no question about it. I mean it was it was all it was all huge. I, when you when you think about um, getting ready for, for for this football game, what's what's the first thing? I mean, do you, do you okay? We don't want to outthink this. We don't overthink this. I should say, uh, we know what got us here. Yeah. We, we're not. We don't really want to vary much from our core principles. Is it just you know doing it a little bit different way kind of thing? Yeah, I think that's probably the best way to put it. Um, We've been really good all year long about knowing what we're good at uh, and knowing what our guys are good at and how to put them in those positions. Uh, knowing really what Joe's comfortable with. He does a great job communicating that. And um, we knew that we weren't going to go crazy. You know, we're not, we'll find a couple wrinkles. We'll find some things that, that'll help us, you know, based on what the scheme we're playing. But at the end of the day, we're, we're going to do what we do and what, what got us here. And, we're not going to stray too far from that. And, and we got in here because our guys have executed at a really high level and, and we're not going to do anything that would take away from that. We want, we want them to be fast and free and not think and, and play uh, as good as they can possibly play without having to think about anything. And, um, you know, a lot of that's going to come from, from just being who you are and doing the things that you do well uh, and, and knowing what those are and, and just doing that. Uh, and don't, don't overthink it. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. Uh, coaches, we, we can get in the way sometimes, you know, uh, we try, try to be too cute and too fancy and you know you don't need all that you know we got here for for a reason and, and we know what those reasons are and um, you know you always got a game plan and do the things to, to help your team and put you guys in position but you know we're going to be who we are uh, i think on both sides of the ball and that's that's all you can ask for and that's all the players want is to be put in a position to have success and know that, that their skill set's going to be used the right way uh, and give them a chance to go win the game it's interesting coach defensively raheem morris I mean, the Vic Fangio tree is all over it, though. I mean, um, you, you, you played against Denver's defense, Vic Fangio. Brandon Staley, who is the coordinator uh, with this football team, you know, and, and goes to the Chargers. Yep. Um, so there's some common threads there. Is there a core base of that Vic Fangio type of thing? And there, there's going to be wrinkles and a little salt and pepper to everything. But is there a feeling of comfort that – We've already game planned against this type of defense when we played Denver and we played the Chargers. Yeah, and we played Chicago too, which is also uh, insane. Right. So right. there's, we've seen this structure a few times, um, you know, and, and played good in some and not good in others. You know, it, it is a hard defense to play against. Uh, they have their own spin on it because they got such unique talent, uh, especially up front, and they got Jalen Ramsey back there as well, and uh, they they do a good job. But the the structure, if you're going to put it in a family, you know, everyone's got a family of of scheme that they kind of lean on and sure it's definitely still in that now Raheem isn't from that scheme uh, he took over that defense and, and basically kept it as it was right and uh, has done a great job they've done a great job all season long of, of limiting people's explosive plays and they're great against the run um, they're a really difficult defense to to play against um, and they're just like us their their defensive their defensive plays are really a huge reason why they're in this game uh, playing in the Super Bowl is because of how well their defense is played and we got our hands full. It's a really, really good unit uh, with, with arguably two of the best pass rushers in the history of the NFL uh, between Von Miller and, and Aaron Donald. You know, there's not many that are they're going to finish their careers probably being two of the best their position to ever play. And uh, we got our hands full. Yeah. And then 
Floyd, nine and a half sacks there. And you mentioned yeah. front end. Everybody's got multiple pass rushers, but the interior defensive linemen, I mean, Simmons, Jones, Aaron Donald, whoa, man. I mean, the interior guys can just, you know, push that middle of the, in, inside of the pocket, yeah. and, like you talk about. And then on the back end, to have a guy like Jalen Ramsey. I mean, that's a genetic marvel out there at corner with the size that he has and the speed that he has. And they line him up everywhere. Out, you know, he'll line up either side, to line up inside both sides of the of the uh, the defensive football team. But and he will chase. You know, he'll, he'll trail it. Will he chase chase? Do you think he'll chase chase some? But Higgins is good. I mean, will he will he line up on Higgins and will they double chase? Will he line up on chase? Will they double Higgins? Will they do a little bit of everything? Do you have to kind of prepare for it all, coach? Yeah, you got to be prepared for it all. They, you know, they've they've shown that he'll, he'll travel with your best player. Um, you know, whoever they deem that to be. I think we got two outside receivers that are uh, certainly vying for the respect of being the best player. Right. Uh, you know, T's had almost. You know, T's had 200 yard games basically uh, in the playoffs. So that that's a that's a big that's you can't turn your nose up at that. But you know, they'll they'll have their their, their answers and their ways to try to handle us. You know. Um, you just prepare for whatever whatever they present you, and you try to have a good solid plan for uh, whatever shows up, and, and be ready to adjust as as the game starts. And I think we've done a really good job of that all year long. So, what what is it that you like best about your offensive football team? Uh, they're resilient. You know, that's the biggest thing to me. And uh, they never, like I said, they don't they don't flinch, they don't panic. They just they they just keep keep playing. And, and and they love playing football together, which I think is a, a, a factor that gets overlooked. Sometimes you get enamored with the, the star power, but um, our guys love playing together and they play really hard for each other. Um, and I think that's a that's a that's a championship trait. You know, you, you, you end up in championship games when you have a team full of guys like that. And certainly on offense, we do. We definitely have it on defense, but um, they're just they just have such great enthusiasm and love for playing football together that it makes you love coming to work and coaching football with them. You know, they just, they just do it all, all hard and they do it for each other. And it's, it's really fun group to be around. Uh, Joe Burrow um, in high school, yep. in the championship game in high school, put up ridiculous numbers, played at his best in the biggest moment in college, you know, won the national championship, made a run through the playoffs and won the Heisman and played at his best in the biggest moments. And now here, in the National Football League when he's had a chance to get this far in the season, only could play 10 games last year because of the injury uh, to the knee, the ACL, MCL injury. But now that he's had a chance to get into the most important part of the season, he's playing at an extremely high level at his best as well. How, how much respect do you have for a guy that continually, you know, the bar is as high as it can be, and he and he reaches it? How How, how unique is that? I think you'd find over history, it's pretty unique. Uh, there, you know, he's he's got a chance to do something that really uh, no one's ever done before, as far as you know, being a Heisman Trophy winner, a national champion, and number one overall pick, and then going to a Super Bowl. I mean, that's 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 what I would call meeting expectations, you know. Um, and that's rare, you know. I think that you know, Peyton Manning probably is in that in that mold of just always was expected to be great all the time, um, and he was for the most of his career. Um, there's not a lot of guys like that, though. LeBron James, you know what I mean? Like these are the guys that you're talking about that um, have have consistently been great through their whole careers from the start to finish. Um, and Joe's Joe's probably growing on that list of people that that are uh, in that mold. And what what's great about him though is that he treats everything the same, and the game doesn't change for him. He he prepares the same way, same amount of effort. He never he never gets too high about it, um, and and he just continues to go about his business. Uh, and that's how he gets to where he's at. Is he just keeps going and he works really, really hard. Uh, and that's why he plays. I thought his answer the other day was great. He said, well, this is why you play. This is what makes it fun uh, is, is to be in these, in these huge spots uh, with a chance to win something really meaningful. And uh, it's, it's been, it's been cool. And then we just got to go finish it off. I think you're right. I, I don't think there's been a quarterback that has won a national championship, the Heisman trophy, been the first pick of the draft, and has won the Super Bowl. I, I don't even think there's one that's gotten to the Super Bowl in all those other other things. I mean, he's in rarefied air. There is no no, no two ways uh, no two ways about that. Um, Jamar, I mean, how how much how much room does Jamar have to grow? Do you think, Coach Jamar Chase? Oh, he's gotten better every every week this year. Um, his, his repertoire 
uh, his skills of understanding uh, leverages and releases and and how to play against different types of DBs and how to play physical. He's he's a tremendous talent. Uh, physically, he's, he's he's gifted. He's got as much talent as anybody in football. Uh, but I think what makes him even better is that he's 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 humble and hungry, and he wants to learn. Uh, and every day he goes in, he works to get better, and he tries to he's 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 committed to being great at his craft. And uh, he's done a great job of keeping his routine, minimizing his distractions, um, and really performing at the level that we thought he was capable, and then some. Uh, but he's still got room to grow. He's only played, you know, he's he's played a season of NFL football, and uh, there's plenty of things to, to to get to get better at. Um, I think that's for all any, anybody in playing players, coaches. Uh, every year you get a chance to improve something, and, and there's always something. And um, you know, Jamar definitely has room to do things better and and who knows what that's going to look like uh, when he when he irons out even some of the things that he's not as good at uh, how how much better he can be and and he's been phenomenal so far the, the his ceiling is is as high as anybody's I've ever been around I'm interested to know when at what point in the season did you realize man we could have something special here this this could be pretty unique is there a point or a game or anything that comes to mind where it was like wow we're pretty good. We we might be really good. <laughs> yeah, the Baltimore, the first Baltimore game was probably the most the most eye opening one. Where you know yeah. that was a team that it, that it kind of handed us our, uh, you know, we had, they, we took our medicine against them for for two years. You know, they yeah. it really wasn't ever close. They they beat us. They beat our they beat us down pretty good. Um, yeah. yeah. And so to to come up and stand to go on the road and, and do that there, um, was was a was a moment where like oh I think we can be pretty good. You know, and then and then beating Pittsburgh um, at their place early in the year, you know, we, we were like, OK, we, we can we knew we could beat Pittsburgh because we've done it in uh, Monday Night Football in 2020. Right. Um, but we just we felt like all of a sudden, we, you know, we, you, you got to win this division and it's a really hard division to win. But once we went on the road and beat Pittsburgh and then went on the road and beat Baltimore the way we did, it was like, oh, we are a good football team. We can be good. We were as good as anybody in this thing. And um and I think our guys believed it too at that moment and it really took off from there. Get you out of here on this coach and appreciate you giving us so much time. Cause I know this is a, a busy, uh, busy prep time for the biggest game the national yep. football league has to offer. What's the one piece of advice that uh, you would give your team when you're preparing to play in super bowl 56? Um, enjoy it, you know, enjoy it and there, there's a balance because you are there to go win a game and and i think zach you know zach and i both had experiences at the super bowl and, and he gave a great message to the team is that you know the, the fun of the super bowl is after you win it and and that's that's where the fun comes in that's the that's the parade and the rings and the white house and all the fun things that come along with it uh it's the greatest off season of your life uh, you know i didn't i didn't quite get to live it the same because i took a new job right after um so i went right back to work but it is it's the it's 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 the it's the equivalent of a football heaven, you know. It's it's the best you could ever be. Uh, it's it's an unbelievable opportunity, but you got to go win the game, and you got to prepare to go win the game, and you got to eliminate the distractions because there's a whole lot of them um, when you get to the to get to the spot. There's a lot of people trying to pull you in different directions. Uh, there's a lot of things that are out there, and you know these guys have all been to Super Bowls before. There's parties and all that stuff, and those aren't for us. You know we're, we are we are we're, they're here for us. They're here for the party uh, to come watch us play. And our guys got to do a great job of, of focus, practice, being ready to go play because, again, the, the fun is after. And um, you want that feeling and you want to be able to do that. So you do everything in your power uh, to have the greatest two weeks of preparation you can have to put yourself in the best position to go win. And uh, our guys have bought into that, and I think they understand it. But that's the that's the key, though. You don't, you know, this game's not fun when you lose it. Oh, I can vouch for that, Coach. There's so, no doubt about it. I mean, hard to get over when you lose it. At First Star Logistics, we're a very strict company that really puts the pressure on our employees. Brakes? What are those? That's what I'm talking about, Icky. Get the body right, then the mind's right, you know? Yeah. You know, you gotta get that body right. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Become a star with a chance to earn the highest commission percentages in the industry as a freight broker agent. Check out FirstStarLogistics.com.